stamped paper, right? So it was basically a test of, 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 uh, of uh, whether the, the, the uh, maximum square sharp ratio is expanded. So if the alpha here is positive, if the alpha is positive, it follows that this factor here, the respect factor, expands the mean variance frontier. So the risk variance factor expands the mean variance frontier. But what's the problem here with that approach, or if we basically run this regression? So the problem is that all this information here is ex post. Yeah? So even C is determined ex post. And we need the whole data set, so the ex post data set, in order to determine the alpha and the beta. That's the problem with, with this approach. So, in the earlier paper, it is claimed that the strategy could be invested, could be implemented in real time, yeah? and, it, and it would basically increase the utility of a real time investor. But is that really true? So, this current paper casts doubt on, on that. So, what they argue. What they argue is, first of all, you should not consider uh, either the volatility advantage counterpart or the standard counter counterpart, but what you should do is you should compare the sharp ratio yeah, of the volatility managed counterpart and the standard factor together. Yeah? You should compare if if this sharp ratio of these two factors here is larger than the sharp ratio of the standard factor alone. So that is the question. So and what we get if you do portfolio mathematics, so what we would get is basically you we will get a weight vector. Yeah. We have one and the estimated uh, w hat 2, yeah? and again we would use obviously uh, ex post data, so we would, we would use the whole data set. But again we would have the same problem, because a retail investor doesn't, doesn't know the weights, uh, the optimal weights, how to allocate the, 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 the optimal weights uh, in these two uh, potential investment assets. So, in order to get a clue of the strategy actually of this, uh, that this risk, or this, this volatility matching strategy actually works out for, for mean variance uh, investors, the authors su suggest an out of, this is the first point, second, they suggest an out of sample experiment. Out of sample, okay? which is the second point. So how does this work out? So like usual, there are many different ways how to do that and how to implement that. And they discuss in the paper also that they try different approaches. But they start with the, the, the approach whether we use a trading period, yeah. like let this be our time dimension. So they use a sample period of 120 months. As a training period. Yeah. So 120 months. As the first training period. So what they do is then, okay, they estimate this model 
for these 120 months. So they, they know the volatility, they know what has been the volatility of the factor during that time window, and they know also uh, what's the standard deviation or the volatility of the previous months, of course, and what they get is an estimate of the C hat. They, they get an estimate of what is the C hat for that time period. So knowing that, what they, uh, what they can, what you can do next is then you can run the regression for that training period here. So you run the regression f star t. You regress it on an inter set term alpha on beta and the corresponding underlying factor. Yeah, you have to include also a regression intercept term. So what you get is obviously you get from the regression the alpha hat and the beta hat, right? So now we have for the training period we have the, we have determined the c hat, we have determined what's the alpha hat and what's the beta hat. So, so we use this parameter vector, you know, the estimated alpha, the beta hat, and the c hat. We get for the next month the new data. We keep this weight, we keep these parameters constant and just determine for this period here the corresponding factor volatility yeah, using these trading days. And we know the return of that factor also. And we can estimate, no wait, no wait, actually we do not even need, because this falls into the training period, right? Exactly. So, this falls also into, into the training period. Huh? We don't even need that here. So, all this falls into this training period. Yeah? This, you take the last 22 training days of the training period here to, com to come up with this estimate. So, what you then just do is, okay, you, you, you just check what is this factor return for the next period, for the next month, in the next month. Keeping all this constant here, you know, based upon the, the estimates of our training period, we know that the, uh, the f star t is then given by this equation here. This factor here, using the, the estimated c hat from the training period, yeah, and then using this regression equation, we can determine the corresponding uh, f star t yeah, for that period. So we, we, we stack this guy into a vector. Yeah. It's our first observation out of our sample f star t1 So what they then do next is they just move this period, this training period, one month forward then we have 121 months right? and we do the same thing again What happens now is we get a new estimate for c hat and we get a new estimate for alpha hat and beta hat and consequently we get of course then for the next period here, also a new uh, factor or ri um, risk managed factor or volatility managed factor, and we stack it again here in a, in a vector, which is our f star t equal to 2. So we do this until the end of the sample, and the sample is t minus capital, capital T minus 120, right? So what we can do then is, okay, we have our estimated volatility managed or our out of sample volatility managed risk factor and we can compare this guy or we can at the same time store the corresponding estimate for each out of sample point in time for the corresponding underlying risk factor here. Yeah. 
starting with ft out of sample point t minus uh, t1, ft equal to 2, out of sample observation equal to 2, until capital T minus 120. Yeah? So what we can then do is we can use these two vectors here and estimate the sharp ratio yeah? of these two guys. And then we compare the sharp ratio of these two vectors with the sharp ratio uh, of this guy here only. Sharp ratio of the standard vector given the other sample time window. So, and now we have to compare, we have to check if these two sharp ratios here, or if, 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 if this sharp ratio here is larger than the sharp ratio of using just this, this standard factor. So that's basically the, the out-of-sample test. Well, that's basically one of the out-of-sample tests that they discuss in their paper. And of course, it can be also, it can be also expanded you, you, in, in, in the paper they uh, also control for Farman frame three factor models uh, instead of only the the, uh, the underlying risk factor. They also control for Farman frame three factor models. I was wondering, okay, why don't they control for Farman frame five or six factor models? Okay, since this paper is from two thousand and twenty. So this is the basic idea of that paper, and uh, what we will do next is we will go through the corresponding key tables.